Welcome into Inside CU Sports. I'm your host, Jordan Alvis. We're revamping the TV and radio shows this year, Inside CU Sports, following the Perry Thomas show this week. Thanks for Matt Payton and Perry Thomas for kicking us off tonight. First off, we're going to have Coach Ginger Colvin of the Lady Tiger basketball program. Coach Colvin is in the studios with us tonight. And Coach, you start the season off 4-0, mm -hmm. uh, four big wins. You had a tough one to, against Harris Stowe at the very beginning of the, uh, the year. Right. And you go down to Talladega as well, and you picked up a, a tough win down there. We did. Harris Stowe traditionally is, um, if you put them on your schedule, you're pretty happy about it. Uh, they have a new coach. They brought in a couple transfers, actually an All-American from Martin Methodist last year, and she changed things a lot. That was a really tough opener for us, especially since um, Leanne Grider, after tearing her ACL, yep. that was her first uh, out. Madison Clements, after sitting out the entire season last year. So it was a big, big challenge for us. But uh, I think we ended up getting down 12-14 the first half, fought back, and we were really happy to get away with the win there. A win, 65-58 over Hare Stowe in the fourth annual Chamber Classic down at Bethel University. Then you come back with an 88-50 win over Hawassi, mm -hmm. another big win for you. But then you go to, down to Talladega, right. a 73-72 win down there. You pulled out a nail-biter down there. That was tough. Uh, we left, I think, campus on Thursday. We went down, played uh, Friday, Saturday at Bethel, traveled on Sunday down to Talladega and played uh, Monday. Uh, Talladega is a, a pretty good haul from, from Campbellsville, so that, that was a, a really big test for us as well, and they, they have a really good team. Um, so different from us. They're extremely athletic. Uh, they returned almost everyone from their team last year. They lost one of their top scorers, but they, uh, they added to that, and I thought played extremely well. Again, we got down, I think it was 12 points, uh, fought back, and then it was pretty interesting the last minute of the game. But I think our experience paid off, and then having Mass and Clements back in the lineup pays off. You know, you've got a kid like that that can make plays that late. It makes a big difference. Speaking of Leanne Greider and Madison Clements, mm -hmm. you talked about them coming back from injury from last year. Leanne Greider tore ACL in the national tournament right. last year in the quarterfinals. Uh, it was a totally different team without her in the lineup yeah. in, in that show. But she, she's come back, and she's better than ever right now. She is. She's playing really well. Still timid a little bit. I think it's more mental than physical. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, She's a she's a tough kid, and she's gonna she's gonna get it right. She's gonna make it right. And um, starting out, she had two really good defenders on her. Harris Stowe had a kid that could really guard, and Talladega had a kid that could really guard. So she was tested probably about as good as she's gonna be tested early, and and came through with it. And we're we're really really happy about it. Speaking of Madison Clements, she played her way in the Mid South Conference mm -hmm. Player of the Week this week. Right. Uh, a huge honor for her. She uh, scored 19 points a ball game uh, in both ball games. As those following along on TV can see the graphic, 5 of 13 from the three-point line, 16 of 24 from the field. Uh, she ranks number four in scoring per game, number six in three-point shooting, number eight in field goal shooting. Uh, she, she's really turned it on the beginning part of the year. All right, and something we probably haven't mentioned on that, I, I'm, she's probably only averaging for around 20 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. So uh, for her to come out and put those numbers up in, in that amount of time is a good thing too. But Madison's just a different player. She's a different kind of to kid to have on your floor. Um, she's a scorer. She can shoot the ball extremely well, but she's more of just a scorer. She's a basketball player. She can make plays late when you need her to make plays, and she's proven that. Obviously, we didn't get to see her play last year, but uh, previous year when she um, uh, was playing with a bad back, um, we were able to see some of that, and hopefully we can continue to see see her playmaking throughout the year. And now she's 100% healthy. She's got the back and she the She is. Foot. She's tweaked it a little bit. We actually go back to her doctor tomorrow. Hopefully um, hopefully it's just muscular, but we just we don't want to mess around with something this early. So um, just, you know, prayers out to Madison and hope everything goes well. Well, then this past weekend you went down to Pikeville. You beat mm -hmm. uh, Bluefield State College 108-41 down there, and uh, it was a big win for you. Right. Um, it, it was a little bit uh, easier contest, but then uh, you sure. come back with Talladega next week, and that was a big win for you. Right, and you want you want your younger kids in that you play Talladega and you play Harris Stowe you're just not able to to get kids very many minutes and see what they can do uh, we've got some freshmen that we love to see on the floor and, and give them minutes we're able to do that at, with Bluefield State and again they they were traveling they had to figure out how to travel learn how to travel and not just uh, stay awake all night long and, and and goof off they learned that you have to rest you have to eat right you have to get your homework mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we got our traveling in these, these, these first four games. But, uh, we play Talladega at home, and we're so excited just to get home and let some of their families get here, some of the fans get here and watch us play. Speaking of that next ball game, Campbellsville, they come back 
at home on November 21st, 7 p.m. against Talladega. Uh, number 21 versus number four team mm -hmm. in the country. Another tough matchup for you. Uh, that ball game, uh, you can listen to it on 88.7 The Tiger and then live video on CampbellsWithTigers.com slash watch. Coach, another big ball game for you yeah. uh, coming up next Monday. It is. Um, our next, our, I think our five-game stretch coming up is is by far the hardest five-game stretch that anybody will play this season in the, in the NAIA, no doubt. Uh, we have Talladega on Monday coming in here. They'll, um, they're very talented, uh, very, very talented, and I, I can't say enough about them. They, they will come in and give us everything that they have. And then we go down to the top ten challenge in Jackson, Tennessee. We play uh, John Brown University, who's very talented, uh, Westmont, who I think is the best team in the country. And then uh, we come back. After that, and after that, uh, Friday, Saturday, then the next Thursday, Saturday, we could open up conference with Cumberland U. Lindsay, probably the two top teams other than Shawnee in our in our league. Well, then you talk about those conference teams. You, you get right into conference play. You mm -hmm. usually open up with Cumberland and Lindsay, mm -hmm. uh, but now it's it's more into uh, you're diving right in once again, and you have a right. tough schedule. A uh, tough schedule, and with with uh, St. Catherine closing, we don't have a travel partner. So every, you know, when Cumberland and Lindsay play us, they just play us. So those teams prepare for just us all week. When we play, we prepare for Cumberland. We have one day we turn around and prepare for Lindsay. Uh, it's really put us behind the eight ball. You know, I think it's just another challenge our kids have to overcome. We talk about that all, all the time. Our, our team, our conference, I'm sorry, our national record, hands down, is the toughest, toughest record in the, or toughest uh, schedule in the country, no doubt. And then we turn around and our conference is the toughest conference in the country. You take away a travel partner. So we're just, we have a lot stacked against us right now. Uh, it's a challenge that we're ready to face. It's a challenge that we've never gone up against um, before, but we're going to take it one game at a time and see how we come out. And you know, I didn't get to mention the, some of the uh, freshmen you talked about. You mm -hmm. talk about the Hall twins, Kristen and Caitlin, Madison Faulkner. She's got right. some minutes down there in the, the Chamber Classic. Uh, Q Paradis. Uh, mm -hmm. she, she's been a really su right. a good surprise for you, a senior transfer from she Barcelona, has. Spain. Uh, she stepped in the starting lineup as well and she's played well. She has. She's come out and uh, I think at maybe our second or third league scorer right now. Uh, we've, we've rotated her and Jordan Dorham mm -hmm. out. Uh, Jordan was a freshman for us last year, so we're trying to figure out who's the best one to put in that rotation. Both are great kids. Both are working really hard. and. Uh, that's our key. Either either Q or Jordan is going to be the key for us. We have very veteran guards, very seasoned in that position, very, very talented guards. So uh, that post game, once they get to where we want them, I think will be really difficult to beat. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time as always. Once again, Lady Tiger fans, Campbellsville will open up uh, their home schedule on November 21st for Talladega, 7 p.m. You can follow that ball game, ball game at 88.7 The Tiger, the CU Sports Network. When we come back, head coach of the cross country and track team, Hillary Lakes, and the newest national champion, Adam Sandage, joins us here on Inside CU Sports. Campbellsville Baptist Church, a church building kingdom community through small groups, kids ministry, youth ministry, and worship. At Campbellsville Baptist Church, we are dedicated to sharing the love of God because God's love changes the world. Join us on Sundays for worship at 9 and 11 and small group Bible study at 10. Located on North Central Avenue and on the web at CampbellsvilleBaptistChurch.com. Welcome back to Inside CU Sports. I'm your host, Jordan Alvis. Just uh, would like to thank Coach Colvin for stopping by. Now joining me in the studio, though, is head cross country coach Hillary Lakes. Coach Lakes coming in, and uh, she's got a new Mid-South Conference champion, a new national champion this year, Coach. And uh, Adam Sandage, he, he won the conference championship two weeks ago. This past weekend, he won the NCCAA Christian College Championship. It's a big feat for your program. Yeah, that's really huge for us. Um, we've never, since I've been here, but even in school history, we've never had a NCCAA uh, cross-country champion. Um, and so that was really exciting for us just to even watch, but to have that, you know, as part of our cross-country program and um, to continue building from there is really, really cool thing to have. And you talk about the, the team overall. Let's go to the team first. Last year, you were first in the conference. Mm -hmm. you, you knocked off Shawnee State, who was a big powerhouse in the cross-country world. And then this year, you finished second to the Bears. Uh, but uh, you had two of the top runners, uh, two of your top runners, uh, were able to compete for the NAI National Championship here coming up this weekend. And uh, that, that's really a huge feat for you. Adam finished first, and then Brett Crawford, he qualified as well. Yeah, conference was really exciting. Um, kind of going into it, we kind of knew that we were kind of sitting second. Um, Cumberland's was a little bit on our tail for third, but 
we kind of are really confident about that. But from last year to this year, I graduated three of my top five. And so to come back and finish second, you know, with, you know, all these new athletes that were not part of our team or not part of the top five or part, top, part of the top seven, and that was really big, you know, big deal. Um, even in my top seven, I have no seniors. Um, and so I had, I think, one junior and a bunch of freshmen, sophomores. Um, and so I think, I think my top seven is three freshmen, three sophomores, and one junior. And so to have that even looking forward to next year is going to be really exciting. Um, but just to watch Adam and Brett and even, you know, Will was so close He's to right qualifying. Um, that was really exciting just to watch and see how much we've grown from our very first meet in the season even to conference. Well, I think, too, uh, you're talking about the, the program, the first time a program conference champion, the first time a program national champion. How big is that for your program going forward now in recruiting, uh, being able to, uh, to get some of those top uh, the, the top tier runners? Uh, I think that's going to actually be really beneficial to us. You know, kids want to be part of a program that's so su successful. They want to be a pro part of a program that's going to do well. And um, I think that that's going to help our program and get the athletes that we want when, you know, they're looking at us or Lindsey Wilson or they're looking at us or the University of the Cumberlands because um, those are going to be the, you know, the other two schools that we're competing against for some of our recruits in this area. And so just to have that, you know, as part you know, this is what we've done in the past two years or three years or whatever it is. I think that's going to look really good and it'll help bring in more recruits that we didn't have before. Now let's focus on Adam. Uh, he was, uh, uh, the, as we said, the Mid-South Conference champion, the NA or the NCCA champion. First time in program history, 25-52 um, at the conference, uh, or excuse me, at the NCCA. That's the second fast time in his career here. Uh, NAI qualifier. Uh, it's, it's just a huge feat for him. And talk about how he's really built himself up through uh, the last three or four years? Um, well, Adam's a junior, and so we still have him for one year, more year, which is really awesome. But I think his freshman year, I'm trying to think what his best was his freshman year. It was 25 something. Um, and so for him to, you know, two years later to run a 24, you know, 51, 24, 52, um, and to do it two weekends in a row yeah. is really, really awesome. And he's really come a long way, even just from last year to this year. Um, I'm trying to think, last year, um, even the conference champion last year, it was from Lindsey Wilson, ran a 25-40 something at conference, and he's coming back and running a 24-51, where the field itself is getting so much faster mm -hmm. also. Um, but just to see how much, you know, he's worked really, really hard for this too. You know, the summer training and even during the season and working hard and going those extra miles and doing the extra reps or whatever it takes, um, he's come a really long way. And so it's been really exciting to watch the last two races and at the finish because, you know, he's been neck and neck with, you know, that competitor. Um, through, you know, whether it's the third mile or fourth mile, depending on which race you're looking at. And then to see him break away, you know, it's been really exciting. And I know his parents are really, oh, yeah. <laughs> they were really excited about it too, just to watch that finish for both of those races. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time and, and good luck this weekend with, with Brett and Adam both going to NAI. Thank you. When we come back, the newest national champion, Adam Sandage, is going to sit down with us for a little sit-down interview here on Inside CU Sports. Citizens Bank and Trust knows just how hectic your day can be. Stay on track during your busiest days with Citizens Bank and Trust. Buying the latest gear to support your favorite team. Or grabbing a coffee after studying all night. Citizens Bank allows you to deposit your checks with the snap of a picture at any time, especially after hours. Citizens Bank and Trust, keeping you on schedule. Now introducing Apple, Android, and Google Pay. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lending. Welcome back to Inside CU Sports. I'm your host, Jordan Alvis, getting you caught up on some athletic highlights from the past week and also the weeks coming ahead. Joining me now, though, is the newest national champion in CU Athletics history, Adam Sandage. And Adam, uh, you won a conference championship or two weekends ago. You go to the NCCAA National Championship. You won a national championship, the 24th in program history for CU Athletics. Uh, what does that mean to be a national champion? Uh, it means a lot because coming in as a freshman, you know, I didn't know what it took to be a national champion or what it took to compete on that kind of a level. And I just came in as a freshman and just said I was going to work my hardest and do my best in my four years that I'm here. And then it took me to national championship my junior year, so I'm really excited about it. A junior from Hodgenville, Kentucky, and you're, you're coming in from LaRue County just right up the road, kind of just 25, 30 minutes up the road. Um, what, what was the decision making whenever you chose Campbellsville, kind of a hometown school for you? Uh, well, I'm kind of a third generation to come here because my grandparents came here and my parents came here. I've had some aunts and uncles come here and then now I'm here and so that played a big role because I've been around CU all my life. Um, I grew up in Taylor County until I was about three so I'm familiar with Campbellsville. Um, 
And I just really liked the school. I came on my visit. I knew some guys on the team. I felt really accepted by the team. And like I really get along with them for my time here. And so that played a big role in my decision. Now let's talk about that Mid-South Conference Championship you had two weeks ago down in Bowling Green. Uh, you, you pick up a, a, a first place finish. The first time in program history you win the conference, or anybody wins the, uh, the conference championship in program history. And, and that's a huge feat for you, for the program. It kind of moves the program to that next level. You won the conference championship last year as a team. Now you get an individual champion, and that's a huge feat for the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, after last year and when we did it as a team, it, you know, it makes you feel like you can do anything. And that it doesn't matter how good you think anyone ahead of you is. Um, if you work hard, you can outwork anybody. And so coming in this year, I knew we had a young team, but I knew we could still do really good. And so I want to do my best for them to try to get us finished as high as we could. And then I ended up winning myself. So. And I think that's a, that's a huge leadership thing, too. You, you, you know that coming in, you're, you're going to be the leader on the team. Uh, you and Brett and Will Ballard, uh, Brett Crawford, who also qualified with you mm -hmm. uh, and finished uh, um, high in the, in the conference tournament or conference championship, excuse me. And, and those are huge feats. Now you both go on to the NAIA championship, you and Brett both. Um, that's, that's a huge feat for the program as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, me and Brett, we work together really well in workouts and in runs, and I think we're both going to go do very well this weekend. Um, Brett's only a sophomore, so it's really good that he's going um, as an individual with me. And so um, I feel like he's going to do really well, and I feel like we'll do really well together this weekend. Now, lastly, on the conference championship, you were you won that one, Bob. You said about 25 seconds. Uh, kind of talk about the, the steps in the race, and uh, you talk about the, just the different mile markers and whenever you want to start picking up the pace. Yeah, um, my goal all season was to get under 25, and so that's what I really focused on. But in this race, I just wanted to win, and so I just focused on racing how I needed to do to win. Um, I went out, and I raced with the guy that was ranked ahead of me for about three miles and just did what he did. And then about mile three, I started to feel really good, so I took off and picked the pace up a little bit, and he didn't answer back, and so I just took off and just did the best that I could and ended up winning. And then the Christian College last weekend, you pick up another first-place finish, back-to-back -back championships. So to kind of talk about that race as well um, in that AK. Well, I feel like the conference championship really gave me a lot of momentum going into this race. And, you know, when you win, you want to do it again. And so I really wanted to win this race. Um, I did the same thing. I went up there with the front packs. I knew there were some guys faster than me going in. I just raced with them and did what I could. And then we had a mile to go, so I said, I'm just going to go for it. And so I just picked up the pace and took off and ended up winning. You ended up winning by eight seconds. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's, that's a lot of time in, in the cross-country time. Yeah, it is. Because uh, me and the guy, we were neck and neck the whole race right next to each other. I couldn't ever get an advantage on him. He couldn't get one on me. And finally, I just said I was just going to make a big move and see what happened. Well, buddy, we appreciate the time as always, and good luck this weekend at the NAI Championship. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, when we come back, we'll visit with the Mid-South Conference Coach of the Year and the Freshman of the Year, Ignacio Mangata and Adam Preston, both, when we come back here on Inside CU Sports. The gift of reading is worldwide. Whether you're sitting at home or enjoying nature with your favorite book, Dog-Eared Books is here for you. Located on East Main Street in Campbellsville, Dog-Eared Books has a wide variety for all your reading needs. Find your favorite author or search your favorite genre. Stay up to date with all our extra events on social media at Dog-Eared Books KY and also dogeareddbooksky.com. Dog-Eared Books, because books are a man's best friend. Welcome back to Inside CU Sports. I'm your host, Jordan Alvis here. And now we're the switching back into the fall sports, men's soccer. Coach Adam Preston joins me here on Inside CU Sports. Coach Preston, you're coming off Mid-South Conference Championship, first one in program history of the conference tournament. Uh, you've won the regular season, now the tournament. It's a big deal for your program. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Uh, when we set our goals at the beginning of the season, we talked about the things we wanted to do, and we knew how difficult they would be. Um, going back to the offseason, putting the time in the weight room, uh, we wanted big goals and big dreams, but we wanted attainable ones, and we believe all those were. The next step now is a national championship. You know, we, we're not satisfied with what we've done. Very proud of the guys and what all they've put into it. Um, but the national championship is the big step for us. And you talk about some of the, the, the last few years. Last year you won the regular season. And, and this is just my opinion. I think you've had some, some really quality stars on your team the last few years. You had, uh, uh, you had Cholo the last few years, Marcelo Petit. Before that, you had Rory Yearwood. You had some stars. But this year, you have a lot of players who are quality, above average guys, and they're all coming together as one. It's true. We still have some of those stars. They just don't show as much. When you're a goal scorer, you're going to score 30 goals. Everybody's going to know about it. We've got guys all across the field that, in their position, they're stars. They just don't show as much. Um, but collectively, we've been better. I think that's a, it's a big part of it is the overall level of the team has come, come up. And again, quality top to bottom, and even our depth, we go 18 to 22 players deep, and a lot of teams are going 13 deep. We can really turn the screws on some teams. 
And you talk about some of that, you know, the Mid-South Conference Tournament Championship, a 0-0 draw, you go into the shootouts, uh, the PK to finish up, and, and Gonzalo Sopina, your, your goalkeeper, who's been solid all year, top, top five in the country all year in every statistic category there is. Um, he came up big, a huge first save against Lindsey Wilson. That, that set the tone for the PKs. Yeah, and he was huge that whole game. To be honest, Lindsey outplayed us that game. They were the better team on the day, um, but he kept us in that game, and when the moment came, he was available. Uh, he did the job that we've asked him to do. We went out of two games last year on penalties, so we've been working it. We've been specific about the mentality of it, and we knew exactly what we wanted to do. No surprises, and it's, it's an easy thing if you don't think about it, but as soon as you get mental on it, then it starts to become difficult. Gonzalo takes a lot of pressure off of that first save. You talk about uh, everybody asks you what's it mean to win a conference championship, whatever it may be. Uh, but Pac Hai Chan, a freshman, comes in, scores the last shootout goal. Uh, obviously, watching the video, there wasn't any audio, so we couldn't hear, but there was right. video um, and, and just the excitement around the program. What did that feel like whenever that goal went in? Whew, uh, it was great. You know, it's funny anymore, I don't let myself get too excited. I, I don't know. I'm always looking to improve. So what, what can we do? What little details can we fix? We can play a great game and I walk out of it like we should have done this better. We should have done this better. Actually let myself enjoy that for a moment. A uh, first instinct was to turn around and congratulate Coach Wells on a great season and a very good game that they played. Um, but then just to see my guys and as I'm walking to the middle field, uh, just to see their faces light up, the smiles I had, give them big hugs. And it's for them, you know, I, I've been doing this for a while and I really love it. But to see the joy that they had, that's where the value is. And that's new. your program. You've built the program up the last four or five years. You've really started to turn the corner. Last year, regular season champions. This year, regular season champions and now tournament champions. Now you're going to the NAI opening round for the second straight year. Yeah, we're, we're excited about it. You know, and it's hard because you always want to do something better. And somebody asked me, you know, well, what's the next step? We're going to compete with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Every year we're going to have a team that's competing with the next. And the great thing is my email, my text, my messengers all go off all the time with alums. Man, you guys are doing great. Hope you're doing well, but not as good as us. You know, I think our team would have beat you. And there's <laughs> little, that natural rivalry. Yeah, there's that rivalry that exists within. So it's cool to see that, but they're supporting our guys and, and really looking out for what they did and how they built a foundation for us. And, and with the success of the program the last few years, back-to-back -back Coach of the Year awards, uh, Ignacio Mangata Nacho, the freshman year of the conference, that was huge for the program uh, and being able to, uh, to get both of those and just show how the program is progressing. Yeah, I'm not a fan of awards for coaches because I think players make us look far better than we are. Um, I have a fantastic assistant. If I could just push that completely on him, I would. The guy does a great job. He's been offered two head coaching jobs and decided to stay here with us to, to help build to our dream. So take that away, put that on the players. But Nacho getting that recognition, it's a compliment to the players around him. He is fantastic putting the ball in the back of the net, but only to finish the move that's collective throughout the team. So we've got a group of three senior midfielders, um, and then Udai, who's just a freshman this year, uh, who do a great job controlling games and dictating play. Our center backs hold things down and create space, and we pressure collectively, which puts him in good situations. And when he gets those chances, he puts it away. Um, and it was great that, that he stepped up in that role this year because, man, we needed it. And for the, some of those following along on uh, TV, 88, or excuse me, WLCU TV, we can pull up that graphic back up of Ignacio Mangata, the freshman of the year. Um, and he's really, uh, he, he's a freshman from Alicante, Spain, 12 goals, one assist, five game-winning goals, ranks top, in five in the, uh, top five in the country in that category. Uh, he's had a great year. But you talk about some of the seniors. You have Ross Lindsay, you have Alex Higdon, uh, you had Diego Morales and uh, Gabriel DeFritas, the four seniors on your team this year. They've been leaders for this younger class that's come up because you've got a lot of key freshmen as well. Yeah, the experience from going to Nationals last year, I think, carried. They see how long the season is and the details that have to be paid attention to, and they, they require that of the other guys. And none of these guys are the ones that are going to stand in front of you and scream at you. They're the guys that you're going to watch what they do and you're going to follow because of what, they, what they've done. Their accomplishments are something that you desire. So you see these young guys saying, oh, this is just how we do things because there's so many and they're doing it in the right way. Well, on Monday you learned that you finished uh, uh, 12th in the MRPI, the ratings for the NAI men's soccer. It's kind of just a rating system that, to help out uh, with the final regular season poll and, and the final, I guess, the standings and the seating for the national tournament. You finished 12th. You're hosting Grandview on uh, Saturday, November, uh, November 19th at 6.30 p.m. That was just announced earlier this week. Uh, it's a huge thing for your program, back-to-back -back opening round, and then now you're facing another tough uh, uh, opponent in Grandview. Yeah, I, to be honest, we were seventh the last MRPI, 
And the bottom side of our conference is really weak. We played live, we played Pike full, and it doesn't matter. You you can't get a better score than what we got on them. I think we beat them seven and eleven to mm -hmm. nothing. Um, you can't. It just brings you down a little bit. Um, and then not getting a result against Lindsay. I think honestly for the match it was fair, but that didn't help us out. We're okay. We like the matchup against Grandview. They're a very good team, um, but some of their weaknesses play into our strengths. Um, but it'll be a battle here, and we're looking forward to the game on Saturday night. And then also uh, you talk about the conference. Uh, let's talk about the conference real quick. You're the lone Mid-South Conference team in the final, uh, the, the final teams that are left. Um, and and that, that says a lot about your program. It says a lot about uh, the conference as well. Lindsey Wilson is right there, but uh, they had some losses down the stretch, and that really hurt them. Yeah, I, listen, Lindsey's the best team we've seen this year. Um, we played, we played Brian, who was 10 in the nation undefeated when we played him. We've seen other teams in different situations. Lindsey greatly outclasses all of those teams. They had a couple hiccups along the way, and that cost them, and they're not in the tournament because of that. Um, we always want our conference to do well and succeed, but there's a little piece of us that is happy about oh, knocking absolutely. them out of the tournament. And, and that means I mean, that's just for every team here at Campbellsville. It's not just for soccer, basketball, football. Uh, that rivalry, the battle of Highway 55, obviously the game at Lindsey Wilson this year that ended in a 4-4 draw. I mean, that was a huge game. 1,000, 1,500 people were there. They had their band there. They always want to beat Campbellsville. Yeah, yeah that, that, it's just it's part of that proximity thing. And they've had great quality for a long time. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't be who we are if it wasn't for them. Um, just pursuing their greatness and saying, we want that. We see where it is. We see it's attainable in this area. Um, and, and we've gone there. And, and we, now the challenge is to continue to do that. They're not going to give up. They're very well funded. So it's going to be continuing to pursue them and now trying to get them to pursue us and recognizing that that's going to be something they're going to do. Well, Coach, now you got a new challenge this week. Grandview, good luck this weekend, and we wish you all the best. Awesome. Thank you very much. The men's soccer program, they host Grandview University on Saturday, November 19th at 6.30 Eastern PM, Finley Stadium. You can check that ball game out on campbellswithtigers.com slash watch. Also, live stat links available on campbellswithtigers.com. When we come back, head coach of the men's basketball team, Brent Burns, is going to join us for a little sit-down interview as well. Stay tuned for more of Inside CU Sports. Grandpa, famous for dropping a line. Lee's, famous for chicken. Fall into a deal this autumn at Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken with our spicy jumbo dippers combo for only $5.99. Take flavor and value to a whole new level with a cup of our spicy jumbo dippers, a side, a biscuit, and a regular drink, all for an amazing price. It's a deal that's easy to fall for. Make fall value season at Lee's with our spicy jumbo dippers combo for only $5.99. Only at Lee's. Famous for chicken. Welcome back to Inside CU Sports. Thanks for Tuning in here. Now joining us is men's basketball coach Brent Vernon, first year head coach. Coach Vernon, uh, you pick up uh, your 4 0 to start your season. Pick up three wins last week. It was, it was a, a good start to your season. Uh, it's been a good start. I want to say our, our guys have really done a good job buying in, and, and we've really worked hard. And, you know, last week, three games at home, it's always nice to get home, and, and we played really well, and I thought we made major improvements throughout the week. And you picked up uh, three wins. You picked up a win against Wilmington. Uh, that ball game, 108 82. You pick up a big win. 14 of 18 from the three-point line. You really shot the, ball, uh, shot the ball well from the three-point line. We did, and Wilmington coming in, uh, it was an exhibition game for them. We counted it as a regular season game. They had only had one contest at Northern Kentucky, so we really didn't have much going on what they did other than what we saw from last year. They did have quite a guy, few guys returning. We knew they were going to try to play fast, shoot a lot of threes. We did a pretty good job, I want to say, making shots ourselves. We didn't do a great job of, of limiting them in the first half of making shots. They made 9 of 15 threes, which was way too many. But a lot of them, after going back and watching the film, were really contested and hard shots. So I can live with those after going back and seeing it. But we did a good job of holding our composure. We finally got a lead, and then we continued to stretch it out in the second half, and, and we held on. And then you go into the uh, – that night you hit 14 of 18 from the three-point line. Big night for you. Then you go into Ohio State Mansfield. You pick up a 128-58 win over Ohio State Mansfield in the Lou Cunningham Classic. Uh, you played well there again. Uh, 23 pointers in that ball game. Uh, that was the most actually in a game since 1991 when uh, Campbellsville made uh, 22 against U Pike and the head coach then was Lou Cunningham. Yeah, I want to say, and obviously Lou was special, I want to say, and our guys did a good job. They, they did exactly what Mansfield gave us. Um, you know, they were a little outmatched compared to our guys. We had a size advantage, uh, athletic advantage, 
and, and they decided to really pack it in and let us shoot the basketball. And, you know, we really shot the ball well early, and then as the game went on, we continued to make shots. And these, uh, those following along on TV were able to see those, uh, those highlights from Rod Lawrence, Eric Kenny. Great to have those guys back. Crazy athletic guys. They go up uh, uh, on missed shots, alley-oops, and can really make plays for you. They do, and, and what it does is it really just creates and makes the game easier for everybody else because they are guys that can create off the bounce. they are guys that, like you said, are attacking the offensive glass, so they're always having to be accountable for um, sometimes we have guys that, you know, they don't have the athletic ability and they're always accounted for, but not in every situation of the game where these two are. And I think you saw that open it up um, Friday night and especially on Saturday as well. Well, then uh, you, you get a little revenge from Harris Stowe. You, you bring in Harris Stowe on Saturday, the, the final game, the Lou Cunningham Classic winning 77-66. Those of you following along on TV, here's some of those highlights right here. Antonio Chapman drains a three. Uh, kind of start the game off and kind of got you on the right foot. Yeah, and we did a good job. I want to say started out really slow. We got down 11 nothing, and, and Harris Stowe did a great job. They're really well coached, and they did a lot of things right. And then, you know, our guys did a great job of holding their composure, just staying the course, and we finally made a few shots, and we got stops and, and played well in transition. They had a hard time guarding us in transition, but you can't get in transition whenever you the other team scoring on you every time down. But once we got a few stops and everything, it went well. Our point guard play was absolutely amazing. Uh, our two point guards that night combined for 15 assists and two turnovers. We made a lot of shots, five of 19 from three in the first half. The second half, we went five of eight. So we ended up making 10 for the game. We're always trying to get in double figures, and we shot 37%, which is really good as well. And these last couple threes here on the TV, if you following along on WLC TV, Elliot Young hits a three, Hagen Tyler hits a three, and then he hits another one. They, they sparked you late uh, when the game was pretty close. They did, and they're guys that we expect to do that. You know, obviously Rod and Eric are guys that can really help us go. And, and you know, Rod's numbers weren't great, and, and Eric's numbers were good, but. EK, I mean, uh, Elliot and Hagen made big shots down the stretch. And again, it was us finding the right time to take those shots. We didn't force them as much in the second yeah. half as we did the first half. We got the ball inside and we went inside out, which helped a lot, which we haven't done much. And it's been harder because Eric and Rod are guys, even though they're perimeter oriented, they can get post catches and we got to uh, utilize that a lot on Saturday. Speaking of Elliot Young, I mean, he's a senior, he's your leader on the team. Uh, against Wilmington, he had a career high 24 points, or excuse me, uh, 25 points, 9 of 12 from the, uh, the, the floor, 2 of 3 from the three-point line. On the season, second on the team, scoring 17, almost 17 points a game, 57% from the floor, 47% from the three, also averaging six rebounds a game. Uh, nobody competes or, or battles like Elliot. He's really, every year he's been here, this is his fourth year here, he's sort of gotten better and better and, and left his mark. And this year, you know, right now, through five games, he's our best player. He, he competes as hard as anybody. He, he wants to do what a leader is, and he's trying to make sure guys are held accountable for the mistakes, and, and he leads by example. He just he brings it every day, and then obviously making shots and doing the things he's doing helps, but the way he's uh, holding himself accountable on the floor and showing our team the way you're supposed to do things has been very vital for us. And then you talk about Hagen Tyler too, your top returners, Elliot Young, Hagen Tyler. Obviously everybody knows about Hagen Tyler. He led the conference, led the NAI in threes last season. Um, he's starting out very well as, uh, as well. Leads the team 17 points a ball game, scored 33 points against Wilmington last Wednesday, made six of seven from the three point line. He's playing 32 minutes a game as a sophomore. Uh, the sophomore, is, he's really playing well. He is and you know, he started out struggling a little bit earlier this year and it wasn't overall play, I guess just shooting wise. His defense has gotten a lot better. He's trying to get to where he's helping us rebound. 32 minutes a game, like you said, in my eyes is still a little much for him. He played 35 as a freshman because of our lack of depth last year with injuries and everything. I want him to be about 28 or 30. I think he can get as much done at 20 or 30 minutes as he can in 32 to 35 because he's not playing fatigued as much. But again, he made some shots early. He's been putting in a lot of extra time in the gym. And I think you could see that against Wilmington, against Harris Stowe, because after he made a few shots, uh, you could see his eyes and his confidence continue to grow. And he just caught fire, and it really helped us. And he struggled at the beginning of the year. Um, in the very first game, uh, you go, uh, and he really struggled against Central Penn. You played uh, at Harris Stowe. You played at Western Kentucky, the exhibition. Uh, he just wasn't in, in, in his – or he was in just rare form, not shooting the ball well. But you talk about him putting in some time, him and Coach Clement, and, and that's really huge for him. It's been huge. And, again, one of the things I always told him is, as a shooter, you never stop shooting. Yeah. If he stops shooting, I'm not going to play him. And, I, obviously, I think that's good for him to hear because he knows I've got uh, plenty of confidence in him. And, again, with Hagan, 
I think it was a little harder earlier because he was have, everybody knew about him, and without Rod and Eric out there for defenses to concentrate on those two a little more, they could concentrate on Hagen because he was the guy we were looking to. Now whenever you put two guys that have the reputation that Rod and Eric has, I think it's going to make things easier for Hagen, Elliott, Jalen, everybody moving forward. Well, now the Tigers, they go in to the Mid-South Conference Southern States Athletic Conference Challenge this weekend. Uh, Coach, you play uh, Bethel first game on Thursday night. Uh, tomorrow or tomorrow afternoon, excuse me, 3 p.m. Fans can follow along on 88.7 The Tiger with Matt Payton. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge ball game for you to start in that challenge. It is. Bethel, a uh, very good team, very well coached. They're 4-0 on the year. Um, it's going to be a big challenge for us, I'm going to say. It, it's going to be great for our guys to go in. It's going to be tough playing three games in three days, but it's going to be good for us. A lot of times you don't do that until you get to the end of the year in conference tournament and national tournament. And again, I told our guys, you know, for the goals that we've set, this is preparation for that. Hopefully we'll have a chance later on in the year to do that. But as long as we're focused and ready to go, we'll have a very good chance to go in and, and get some wins this weekend. And then the Tigers, they play two more games in the challenge. They, they play Faulkner on Friday at 3 p.m. as well. Matt Payton will have that call down in Pulaski, Tennessee. Uh, and then they also play Martin Methodist on Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. All those ball games can be, uh, can be heard right here on 88.7 The Tiger. Uh, both teams very good. I'm going to say Southern States have started off very well in their conference. I think Faulkner is 3-0 and right now. Um, they've played very well. They, they've been sort of like us, been set back with a few injuries, but they're starting to get some guys back. They play very small and fast. I think it could be a very high scoring game. Hopefully we'll be able to defend. And then Martin Methodist, obviously, they've had a good tradition of being very good. Um, beat Lindsey Wilson earlier this week by 25 at Martin, so it's a very tough place to play. They feel very good about themselves, have a lot of guys from last year returning. So again, we're gonna have our hands full, but, it, but it's gonna be a great challenge for us. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time. As always, uh, good luck this week in the challenge. Thank you, Jordan. The Tigers, they'll play in the Mid-South Conference Southern States Athletic Conference Challenge starting tomorrow night at 3 p.m. against Bethel University. Join us next week at 6 p.m. for Inside CU Sports. Thanks for tuning in.